Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now at first glance this may look like an ancient Quadro graphics card and that's not exactly wrong but the NVS 420 is slightly different to most of the cut price Quadros you can pick up on the second hand market these days. Dating back to 2009 this Tesla based low profile card features a supersonic 550MHz clock speed as well as a whopping 256MB of GDDR3 or should I say 256MB per GDDR3. GPU. That's right, the 420 here is a dual GPU card featuring two G98 chips on a single board. I think it was one of, if not the first low profile card targeting the professional market as well, offering support for up to four 2560 by 1600 displays via VHDCI connector. A VHDCI to quad DVI adapter actually cost me more than the card did today, which was just £11. The adapter was 20 on eBay. I was able to install the regular 342.01 GeForce drivers or the 342.00 Quadro drivers with the NVS, though NVIDIA Control Panel nor any other software gave me the option to manually enable SLI. That's not how one of these things works. The card dynamically allocates GPU resources to optimise performance according to some old NVIDIA documentation that I found. The extra G98 GPU helps give it a bit of a boost in those demanding multi-monitor situations. Owning an old Quadro can still be a really cost effective way of running multiple displays. I was able to play, or let's say start, uh, some games on my main 1080p monitor and keep an eye on the performance stats on the big screen. Because there are four connectors that come from the VHDCI port once the adapter has been connected, I could mirror my primary display in OBS as well and record any footage directly. For just £11 it still has its uses, that's for sure. Of course it was never meant to play games, but it's always funny to try and squeeze playable frame rates out of one of these things. Anyone who spent $500 over a decade ago probably had no intention of playing anything, but let's see what we can expect. Left 4 Dead is a good way to describe this card in 2023 to be honest, and it's also the title of our first tested game. Left 4 Dead 2 here at 720p with the lowest settings started quite solid, but the more I played the slower the game got which was quite amusing to behold, but not an ideal gaming scenario with hordes of infected running towards you. This is actually the cause of the slowdown. I'm using a Ryzen CPU to test this card with as it isn't compatible with my 13th gen i5 system, though the 2400G still has plenty of power to let the NVS 420 reach its max potential. Ironically though, the CPU's integrated graphics are much better. This thing does however still work with Windows 10 as well. Call of Duty Black Ops at a fantastic 800 by 600 now and the lowest settings of course. An absolute disaster I'm sure you'll agree, but totally expected from this aging dual GPU workstation card that's for sure. The original Skyrim just about hit 30 FPS as an average, so not bad if you want to experience this game for the first time on PC and you have a very tiny budget. Busy areas will pose more problems, but it isn't really too bad. The resolution for me is the biggest issue. 800 by 600 isn't too easy on the eyes, especially for long periods of time, unless you have a native 800 by 600 monitor, which is probably unlikely. I'm surprised that GTA 5 actually ran, but we did need 800 by 650 percent scaling, so yeah, resolution-wise, we're at pretty headache-inducing levels. The VRAM of the card definitely doesn't help either. We're pretty or severely limited in that regard, I should say. In contrast to GTA 5's performance, we have the older yet still brilliant Half-Life 2, which ran like a dream with over 60 FPS at 720p. This was like I was playing on an entirely different piece of hardware. A fantastic result from the Quadro here which is evidently fine for those much older games. The less said about CSGO the better so I didn't even bother benchmarking it. It's pretty terrible but also quite funny when you're trying to wipe out numerous enemies and failing massively every time. Unless you're playing competitively in which case you wouldn't have one of these cars in your system anyway. Far Cry 3 actually ran better than CSGO but that doesn't really mean much because it could have run 100% better and still have been terrible, which in fact it did sometimes, but there we go. 
NVIDIA's old dual GPU Quadro, one of, anyway. There are a few different 400 series models and none of them are the first example of a dual GPU Quadro. By the way, that honour goes to 2004's Quadro 4 400 NVS, a PCI card. For gaming, well they're probably all going to be bad, but for workstation usage, on a very tight budget, you can still get some decent usage out of an old Quadro card like this one and they may be worth considering if that's what you're looking for. All in all then, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.